Hello there everyone, it is TIJ and welcome to Football Manager 2019 Team Guy. And today is the turn of Southampton, a team I suppose you could say in turmoil. They've got plenty of Premier League experience over the last few years with six plays being their highest finished in contrast to last year's finish, finishing position of 17th, narrowly missing out on relegation with Mark Hughes taking over late in the season, ironically, to take down former club Stoke City. But let's get into today's team guide. Now, Southampton, I didn't realise this, but they spent quite a bit of money over the summer. They spent £18 million on Danny Ings, who's a future transfer. Vest Vestergaard's coming from Borussia Munch and Gladbach for £22.5 million. Angus Gunn's cost them £10 million from Man City. And Mohamed El is coming from £16 million from Barcelona. Stuart Armstrong is coming from an undisclosed fee from Celtic. But apart from Ings, do any of those signings scream to you, brilliant Premier League player? I mean, Vestergaard looks pretty good. El Yenissi could be good player. But Armstrong and Angus Gunn are the Premier League players? Mmm, debatable. But the good thing with Southampton, it always has been a good thing about Southampton, is the fact that they can really develop youth players. But it seems that over the last few years that hasn't been enough. You know, the likes... Of, uh, well, you can go back to in the past. You've got Gareth Bale, who's playing for Real Madrid. Now you've got most of their players who play for the Liverpool squad. You've got Nathaniel Klein, Adam Lallana. Who else has gone to Liverpool? I'm trying to think. But uh, Liverpool have given them one back with Danny Ings, which is always nice of us. But, uh, yeah, he's joining Southampton next year. But let's have a look at the squad. I mean, if we look at the club page, their key player apparently is Ryan Birch and their captain. who's really a solid player at left back, which is actually one of their best positions in the squad, I think. Left back is one of their best positions. And although it does say on the team guide, on the team report, that it lacks quality depth, I do think that Matt Target and Sam McQueen are two good players that have got a bit of potential to replace Ryan Bartrand, uh, Ryan Bartrand, Ryan Bertrand in the future. It looks good to me, so I don't really have much, many qualms about left back. In terms of in goal, they've got two solid players. McCarthy, who plays now, but Angus Gunn, who's got a bit more potential ability. And they've also got Fraser Forster in the under-23. He's had a bit of a fall from grace. I remember he was the player in 2014 that many thought, oh, we should get an England call-up. But unbelievably, he's only had six caps. But he's kind of blown that chance now, I'd say. Uh, they've got a lot of players in the under-23s are good, but if we look at the likes of Jack Stevens, these are players that have got a lot of potential. Angus Young, uh, Angus Gunn's 22, you've got Sam Gallagher, James Ward-Prowse, unbelievably, only still 23. Nathan Redmond and Jack Stevens, only to name a few of their English prospects. But let's have a look at the dynamics for Southampton. Now, you've had a few players that have been in this club for a long time, the likes of Stephen Davis and Ryan Bertrand, who are both team leaders along with Shane Long. Now, Stephen Davis is a weird one because... Even though his potential his first team ability isn't the best, he always seems to be for me. He, he puts a shift in, you know, he's got a very good work rate at 19. Um, his determination's 14. He's a very good player, you know. He's got plenty of years of experience now in the Premier League for Southampton. Um, he's played for them ever since they've come into the Premier League back in the 2012-13 to season under Nigel Adkins, I think they got promoted with initially. That seems like a long time ago. But he's a good deep-line playmaker uh, on defence. He's a very defensive player, but can also play on the attacking midfield. It makes him an attractive as a bit of a versatile player. So even though he's coming to the end of his career, you should be able to get a bit of time out of him yet. Bergeron, we've already talked about, but Shane Long, dearie me. Shane, Shane Long. 122 matches he's played for um, Southampton, and he's scored. How many goals has he scored, does that say again? I can't be able to do the maths today. Oh, for Christ's sake, we have to go all the way back here now. 20 goals. Just about sums up. I don't think he's a clinical striker at all. He's got work, good work rate, fair play to him. So possibly you could get something out of him. But I just don't think the Shay Long is one of the best players that you could possibly be playing. But you've got likes of Lashida, uh, Ings, Ward Pro, Cedric and Romeo. Again, most of these players have been in the club for a long time. Uh, apart from Danny Ings. But it looks like a good team that Southampton have got in terms of their dynamics. Not much to worry about. And in fact, that all of their players are at least influential apart from Benrec. Which sounds a lot, says a lot about... Uh, the players at this team and the good social groups. And well, I mean, all, nearly all of the players in that core social group, apart from a few, Lamina, Yoshida and Bednarek, and a few of the new signings aren't in there as well, as well as Hoiberg and Vestergaard, who both speak Danish. But next, on to the tactic that we're going to play with Southampton. I did forget, admittedly, to put Stephen Davis in there, and you thought, I know what, let's put Stephen Davis in there, because he deserves to spot, I think. But in goal, we're going to go with Alex McCarthy with Angus Young, Young on, Gunn on the... I can't even say his name. Angus Gunn on the bench is a, a decent alternative, I think we can say. With Cedric, Vestergaard, Huet and Bertrand at the back. Now, one of the problems is we've got Cedric, who is actually the only player who can play left, left right back naturally. And we'll talk about who can possibly come in to be a backup for him in the near future. We've got Stephen Davies and Romeo in the midfield. But just as I've just illustrated, you can bring Armstrong into that midfield. Hoyerberg, uh, Ward-Prowse and Lamine, who are all very good players. So there's a lot of depth in that midfield position. 
We've got El Unice and Redmond on the wings, but again, you've got a bit of depth. I think Ward Prowse can go and play on the right, but there's not much depth on the right either, actually. Um, and Gabby Adini can also play there as well. And then you've got Danny Ings and Gabby Adini up front. And Gabby Adini is quite a weird one because he had quite a storming season when he first came into Southampton. I remember he had that first. Uh, six months when he came in from Napoli, when he he didn't quite steal the competition away, but he scored four goals in 11 and had a really good start. But ever since then, he's stagnated a little bit, so hopefully he can bring that form back to him. And Danny Ings, of course, I do feel a bit sorry for Danny Ings because he never really did it at Liverpool. He only played 14 games for Liverpool in the end, but he's got some very good stats. He's 26, um, and I think he's got a bit more ability to come yet, and I think he's a very good signing for Southampton. And if you use him well, I think him and Gabby Adini could be a very good striking partnership and I've, I've made my reasons clear why Shane Long isn't in that starting eleven. But that looks like a solid squad to me, playing with a counter-attacking mentality. You've got some solid uh, wing-backs there, but you've also got some good attackers. And I think you've got a good structured team who have got solid, you know, there's a bit of solid defence there. You've got Jack Stevens who can replace one of these defenders, Yoshida, with that bit more of experience. But Jack Stevens has got a few years' experience as well, so it sets you in very good stead for the season. And I do think this squad's a bit better than people think, and... I reckon on FM that you could possibly get them up to the top half. I mean, that might be a bit much to ask, but it still is a good squad. But on to the transfers which we touched on earlier. We look, we'll look in the under-23s first because this team has got a very good youth system. And in, on the right-back um, situation, you could bring in Jan Valery as a backup for uh, Cedric at the right-back position. He's an exciting young prospect. As it says there, he's not far from first-team football. He's well-suited to championship football. The potential to be a good for the Premier League right back in the future, and he could come in, um, but if you didn't want to promote him from one of the youngsters, um, you could bring in a bit more English talent in Kyle Jenkinson from uh, Arsenal. He's transfer uh, listed for Arsenal as a backup player. His asking price is £2.7 million. He's got plenty of experience, actually, in the Premier League. He had a full season playing with West Ham, had another half season playing with West Ham the season after, um, and he's played here, there, and everywhere, really, for Arsenal, and I do think that possibly he could be a good solution as a backup. He's not really going to be asking for much first-team football, admittedly, uh, and I think he could be a good signing. So you've got Valerie who can come in, uh, Jenkinson, there's a few more right-backs, I'm sure, in this team that could get better in the future, like to Kieran Freeman, uh, we've got to the under-18s, anybody looking good in there? You've got Seamus uh, or Seamus uh, Keo, but you've got a lot of good players in the under-18s and under-23s, and obviously, in different saves, these players will perform or not perform um, to different uh, extents and it'll be interesting to see how the youth system at Southampton improves and whether you'll get any gems, any good regens that go for a massive amount and of course if you do get any of those make sure to leave them down in the comments or get in contact with me in the social channels uh, that I'm on and that'll be very interesting to hear to see if any of your players do particularly well. I also mentioned earlier we've got a bit of a struggle on the right wing, we've only got two players can really play naturally there, we've got El Unice and Gabby Adini. I mean, Ward Prowse can play there, but he's kind of competent, but not the best player there. There's two players you could bring in, but you've also got a few players in the under 23s who could fill that position. We've got Nathan Teller, who's a natural right winger. Uh, again, he's probably not up to the standard just yet, but he's a useful rating for the first team, and possibly a season out on loan could do him quite well. A free sign a few years ago from Arsenal, and a year out on loan, he could be ready to come into that first team as a backup player. But if you wanted to have a player now, there's two players I think you can choose from. There's either, De actually, no, sorry, there's only one player I picked out. Um, and that's Rafa from Benfica. Because the only transfer listed player I could find who is natural on that right wing. And he looks good, to be fair. He's got plenty of experience for Benfica, who himself are a very good team. Uh, Braga as well, he's got experience for stuff. Two very good teams in the Premier League of Portugal with Benfica and Braga. Um, but overall, he's a good player, 25 years old. If we look at his acceleration and pace, it's very good. Uh, what is his uh, flair? A10, I'm trying to look at his composure. Not the best at 7, um, but he doesn't look too bad and possibly could be someone you could bring in. Now, Danis Priet, or however the hell he says his name, um, is someone who Southampton actually after in real life. I looked on uh, Football Whispers and uh, he's 3.2 out of 5 to join Southampton in the January transfer window. So possibly he could keep up with the times and be a bit more realistic and bring him in. But possibly he's not going to be a player you might, might, that you could really be able to transfer in. And to be fair, there's a lot of squad depth in the midfield. Let's finally have a look at the uh, mental ability of players. See how they get on in training. The likes of work rate, um, their determination, etc. And determination, the likes of Danny Ings, Jordi Classy, who's actually out on loan. Where's he out on loan? He's out on loan at Feyenoord. He's obviously fell out with the Southampton leadership. Um, but the likes of Ward Prowse doing very well, I can imagine with a lot of these youngsters. Uh, there are a lot of them that have come through the academy, so should have good work rates and determination. 
And it looks like that's not something you'll have a problem with at Southampton. And I do think that this Southampton team, after having a short review of it, is a lot better than people think. But that's going to be it, folks, for today's team. God, I hope you found it effective in learning about the squad, transfers, dynamics, training, tactics, and some of the transfers you could make to fill in those small gaps in the Southampton squad. But thank you very much for watching, folks. I have been TIJ, and until the next video of mine you watch, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.